Hey everybody, welcome in today to My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell, bringing you a great repurposed jar project for you today that will not disappoint. Pickle jar, grab your pickle jars, any glass jar will work. Spaghetti jar, sauce jar, you get the idea, right? We're gonna repurpose this into something new. I've given you all kinds of ideas on how to repurpose some old jars. Today is going to be a fun one. So come on in and let me know that you are here. And if you are watching this replay later over on YouTube, welcome in as well. And if you would like live notifications for when I go live or some updates or details on any kind of thing that's going on here at My Sweet Home Living, make sure you tap that Telegram link below or in the video description uh, if you're watching on YouTube. This is a live 45 minute segment that is streaming into the Craft on the Clock group over on Facebook. If you are not familiar with Craft on the Clock group, you are missing out. So I want to make sure that you know about Craft on the Clock. So if you're watching, the Craft on the Clock link is in my video description where you can head on over. We have live crafting Monday through Friday, early morning to late at night for your viewing pleasure. So come on over and join us. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Susie. Let's see who all's here today. Uh, so excited, you guys. And we are going to have a freebie bonus coming your way for all of you Telegram subscribers today. If you are not on the Telegram notification channel, you'll want to make sure that you're on there because I have a bonus printable coming your way that you can use on today's project if you decide to uh, do it yourself. Hey, Miss Shelley. Hey, Sienna. Deborah and Carolyn, y'all welcome on in. We're repurposing a pickle jar today. It is going to be a super easy project, <laughs> like really easy. And then if we're finished, we'll do some, uh, I have some haul stuff that I've collected over the weekend that we would go through, found some neat stuff uh, over the weekend. I wanted to give you all a look-see and see what we got. So come on in. Come on in, grab yourself a pickle jar, and we're using some tea bag papers. Sienna, you finally got to add to the telegram. Oh, awesome! Well, yes, it's a little tricky once you get on there. It's easy peasy, right? Uh, and it's so user friendly once you get on there and just make yourself figure it out. <laughs> That's really what it takes. But after that, it's so easy, you guys. So easy. Hey, Miss Pat. Hey, Miss Beth and Patty. Okay, guys. We're using some tea bags today. In fact, I went ahead and kind of took some used tea bag papers. Now I get lots of questions, so I thought this would be a good time to kind of talk about this uh, as you all are hopping on today. But I get questions all the time. Those don't look like tea bags that I've ever used. <laughs> or if I don't drink tea, what's something else that I can use instead? So if you don't drink tea, you can use coffee filters. Or you could even use dryer, like fabric sheets, uh, dryer uh, sheets that you put in the dryer, fabric softener. They kind of have the same texture and the same durability. So those are some awesome ideas. But if you use a tea bag um, and you brew your tea, you know, you're setting it down in a pot of hot water or whatever. But when you're finished, you unfold, carefully unfold the tea bag, dump out the wet tea grounds, and then clean off the paper and let it dry. And when you've unfolded it, you get these perfect little sheets of tea bag papers that you can use. They're already tea stained, give you that vintagey look that you can use on all of your projects, and which is what we're doing today on this jar project. Hey from Ohio, had a great find yesterday. Oh my goodness, Cheryl, you bought a Hoosier cabinet and a counter scale. Oh my gracious, that is awesome. So I wanna know who who grabbed one of those vintage surprise boxes from Chasada over at Custom Southern Co? <laughs> Last night she closed the, the shop for those at midnight. I hope you grabbed one of those. If not, stay tuned. I'm sure she'll open it in the near future. I'm not sure when. <laughs> I think we bombarded her, but I can't wait. I've, I've got on board. I grabbed me one. And so whenever I get mine, we're going to open it together on live, just like we did last week with the surprise one that she sent me. There's some beautiful things in it, including, I don't know if you guys can see it. I have my little uh, vintage colander over there. Um, I've already forgotten what all was in it. I've kind of scattered it all here, there, and everywhere, but we had some amazing pieces in there. Uh, yes, we did. You've saved the dry tea bags. Awesome, Kathy. Well, this is going to be a project that you're going to be able to use it on, okay? So um, I just take a jar and give it a light coating of Mod Podge. You can use school glue and a little bit of water, just a real light coat. 
and you're going to cover it with the tea bags, okay? And the reason why I like to do that is because if it's a if it's a jar project, I don't want to be able to see through the jar, like necessarily like see it through it like as it's clear. But let's tilt the camera down. Um, but I want light to be able to shine through it. The tea bags are perfect for that, okay? Because it gives you that soft glow without um, without completely blocking out any light. You know what I mean? Because a lot of my jars I like to put lights in. So I just put my Mod Podge on there and then lay that tea bag on there. And uh, if it's curled up around the edges, just roll it down. They're super durable. And if you have a little bit of discoloration in a certain area, you can apply a little bit of coffee grunge over that layer, uh, over that later, and it will kind of help diminish some of those hard lines. If you see that where the tea um, was on there, you can totally work with that later. Okay. Now I go all the way around. Um, I'm just going to do this one really quick, but I already have one already covered that we're going to work with because it's already dry. Uh, because we're going to do something a little bit different with this project today than what we've done in the past. Um, I tried printing on tea bags today. So I'm going to give you the lowdown on that here in a little bit <laughs> and uh, show you how that turned out. And we're actually going to use one of those uh, printed tea bags on our little um, lamp today. So most of my jar lamps that I have made recently and shown you guys here on live um, have been Christmas. Um, I've made a Valentine's uh, design of a little lamp. And so I don't have any for every day almost. I have a, have this little one. You, know, you can see this one over here. I have that one right there. Um, but it's it's a little bit different in style. The one that I'm needing to replace is the one I used this little tin lampshade on, you guys. This lampshade is amazing. You can find it on Amazon. I believe it's a two by four by six punched tin lamp shade, I think is what you'll call. Okay, you can find them on Amazon. Usually, occasionally, I should say, they have them on sale for like $15, I think which is usually a pretty good deal because usually they're around 20. So they'll knock about $5 off of them if you catch them on sale. Okay. Um, if you have trouble searching Amazon for it, um, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to go and fetch that link later. Um, I have it, I think, saved on my notes on my phone. So I can probably, could probably grab that pretty quick. And it comes in, uh, it comes in black, but then you can also get it in like a, a rusty red color as well. So if that would better suit your home decor, then you can think about that. Okay. All right. So I've covered that jar pretty much. I have one little seam that's open in the back, but I'll finish that later. I do go ahead and put some Mod Podge around the rim of the jar, around the, where the, the lid goes on. And I use my sponge brush and dab that in and really get that coated good and covered. So let me show you what we have. If after you've done that, you have a real nice opaque looking jar. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And it, you can still see light through it. Um, but it's not clear as if it was on the bottom. Okay. So I will cover that with a circle shape cut out of a tea bag later. But I, I just like this look a lot better and it goes with all of my vintage coffee grunged and tea dyed and all of that look. Okay. Um, just kind of blends in with my coloration of the things that I have around my home. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you, let me pull this out. This was really cool. I've never printed on tea bags before. So I thought, you know, hey, you can print on tissue paper. You can print on fabric. Let's try printing on tea bags. Uh, hey, Miss Teresa, how are you? I'm so glad y'all are here today. Hey, Sid, so excited to see you guys. So what I've done, let me just show you. Um, this is a tea bag that is taped down to this paper. Let me pull this off for just a second and so you can kind of get a better idea um, when I describe how I've done this, you'll kind of get the, the gist of it uh, without being too confused. Okay, I have used just some real delicate this satin finish uh, tape, you don't want that uh, really heavy duty tape, okay? 
some of the tape, some of the gift wrap tape, um, well, let's just say not all gift wrap tape is created equal, shall we? <laughs> some of it is easier to pull off than others, right? And so that's the kind I was wanting to go for, the, the kind that's a little bit more delicate and, and easy to remove. So what I've done, I have this label. Now let me, let me flip this camera. I want to make sure you guys get the full effect. <laughs> so take a peek at this little label. Isn't that not cute? It's just, it says Smith and Siemens evaporated, um, it's just poultry, like chicken um, feed. It's a chicken grain sack feed design, right? So, and this is coming to you, by the way, if you're on my Telegram notification uh, channel. <laughs> it's coming to you as a special delivery in just a little bit. Okay, I've already got it set to send to you automatically. And if you're not on the Telegram, I will have it up on my website. Um, Probably won't be today. It'll be sometime this week, okay? Not for sure when. It's just way easier to put it on my Telegram so you guys can grab it over there. Save it as an image, and then you can enlarge it, shrink it, resize it to anything that you need because we all have jars of different sizes, right? So I printed a, a test on a piece of paper to first make sure it was going to be the right size and for two, to make sure it would fit the size of my tea bag, okay? So once I printed that out and determined that was, you know, the size was okay, I took my tea bag and laid it over. I mean, because you can see through the tea bags, right? I laid it over the design that printed on that paper, and I taped it down all the way around the edges. Taped it and make sure it's really good and flat. You know, you don't want a lot of wrinkles or um, gaps with your tape because as your printer head swipes back and forth as it's laying down the ink on the paper, it may snag the edge and rip it, okay, and that could create some problems. So you want to make sure that you tape it down all the way around the edges so that you get a good print, okay? So, and then I just ran it back through my printer again, okay, the same sheet, um, and I have to lay mine face down, and when it comes out, it comes out uh, printed on the top. So now I'm just going to rip this off carefully. My tape, I sh should I not bring scissors to the table? Mm -mm -mm. Forgot them. Okay. This would be way easier with scissors. Let me carefully rip this. <laughs> carefully, the keyword. Okay. These tea bags are very forgiving, you guys. If you want to rip, they rip in a nice, straight line almost every time. And I won't say like every, every single time, but they do. They rip nicely. Okay, so let's toss this over to the side. So here's the tea bag with its print on it. Is that not cool? Love that. Um, so I'm just going to pull off that rough edge right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Mod Podge that right on top of the tea bag that I already have in my jar. Okay. Um, so let me get a little rip across the bottom here. So it's a little longer than I need. And we're going to give this jar a faux grain sack look. It's going to look like a faux burlap sack. And I'm going to show you a really cool lighting effect using some burlap and the lights here just a little bit. It's really cool. Okay, so I have this. And this is going to give us that good feed sack feel. I'm just kind of judging to, or, or looking and kind of measuring, eyeballing it to make sure it's going to fit the way I want it to on my jar. So that's what it's going to look like after we Mod Podge it on there. Okay, it's going to look really cool. So let's put another light coat of this on. And, oh, my comments, they disappeared on me. Hey, Diane and Gail, thank you all so much for being here today. So good to see you guys. It's a beautiful day here in West Kentucky. The sun is shining. There is a little breezy, but not nearly like what we had last week. Um, much easier to deal with today. And I'm just going to smooth it down. If I get wrinkles, I'm okay with that. Wrinkles don't bother me. And we want to make sure that we get all the edges 
touching that Mod Podge so that they have a good contact with that jar. All right, I'm gonna hold this up for you guys and give you a close-up view after I, I'm gonna use my finger and just kind of make sure I seal down those edges really good. I love the way this looks. Now, if you were using this in a kitchen, which I think I'm going to be, you might wanna go back over this with a layer of Mod Podge to kind of seal it to prevent it, you know, staining. So if you get splatters or anything like that on it, you can wipe it clean without damaging, um, you know, your uh, tea bag look because those tea bags they soak up any color that hits them <laughs> which is what we're going to do next we're going to take a little bit of this mod podge let me get, shake it up a little bit i did not heat it up before we started today so it's a little extra goopy <laughs> and i don't need a whole lot i must have not have my lid on real great because it's kind of leaking out the edge here um I just want to add a little bit to my jar. So I'm going to take a, a paper towel, okay? Put it on my paper towel. And all I'm going to do is kind of use this sort of as like a distressing wax, but it has an amazing smell that wax doesn't have, <laughs> right? Hello, Ms. Jody and Cindy and Jillian. Thank you all for being here today. Now, it goes on darker and it does dry lighter, okay? So if it goes on dark and it scares you, don't. Don't, don't let it scare you for long, okay? Um, and I'm just going to kind of go over it. I like to go around the edges. Oh, it smells amazing. <laughs> it smells amazing. Uh, hey, Miss Deborah, how are you? Miss Regina, thank you for being here today. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, now, I can tell that this is, this is really weak <laughs> as far as, like, solution goes because I'm not pulling any of that cinnamon up from the bottom. Um let me kind of use this sponge a little bit and that'll kind of pull up some of that cinnamon let me show you it'll pull some of that cinnamon that has settled and gotten goopy see it's kind of a little bit goopy on my sponge right there um, but that's what makes it work <laughs> that's what makes that cinnamon stick and um, stick to your projects guys all right so I'm gonna go around and I don't want a whole lot I just want a little bit of a coloration. I, you know, you all have seen me grubby up jars before. I'm not going for that effect. I'm going for a much more subtle effect on this one. Okay. So now I'm just going to dab it. And that's going to give me a little bit of the smell with just a little bit more of that color. Okay. Now it will dry light. And I will have little dapples of um, cinnamon around on that. Yes. It smells so good. Okay, not much at all there, you guys. Okay, now here comes the cool part where we're going to add the burlap and some lighting effect that I think you're really going to find pretty cool. Now, we're going for a faux grain sack look. Oh, I forgot my paint. Oh, rats. I was going to grab some black chalk paint. That's okay. Um, it's not absolutely necessary. Let me... I kind of pre-assembled this a little earlier so I could make sure it was all going to kind of fit together. So having to kind of take everything back apart. Now, I have cut out a rectangle of burlap, okay? Now this burlap, you can see it has a fairly loose weave to it, okay? Now, on the edge that is gonna be sticking out of my jar, what I have done is I've taken a few of those little fiber strings, just pulled them out so that I get more of that frayed look on the edge. I love that, right? We all do. <laughs> If you love things that are vintage and rustic, hey, Miss Debbie, how are you? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of set this down in my jar, but I want to, I want to kind of set it down in there like it looks like a little sack almost, right? Like a little sack. Whoop, I have a little thread on there. I don't want that. So I'm going to stick it down in there, okay? Now, a grain sack look is real tattered, right? And kind of maybe folded over the edge. This is just the way my brain's thinking here. So I want this to kind of hang over and give us a little bit of a top edge around the top of our jar. Now I don't want it to cover up my label a whole lot, but I do want to make sure that it stays put. So at this step, what you might want to do is take a little bit of hot glue 
I should have grabbed another glue stick, but I think I think we can make it work. I just need a little dab to kind of tack this burlap down. I'm putting it on the back side of my jar. Um, just so that I can tack that down and it doesn't want to crawl all over the place <laughs> on me as we're working with it. Okay. Now, now I can, if I need to tack it down a little bit more, I can put a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to put it on the inside of the, the jar on this one. That way if it, po you know, if that uh, hot glue comes through my burlap, it won't be visible from the outside of the jar anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now it's, it's sitting there good enough to where we can work with it. Okay. Now what I would probably do next, uh oh, it didn't stay put there. I must have not had enough glue on there. There we go. We'll get it on there now. Okay. I probably didn't hold it down long enough. That's probably what it was. Okay, let me get that glue off my finger. Okay, now what we're going to do next, we're going to grunge this up because this burlap looks too new for me. <laughs> if you followed me long enough, you know I make everything look old and vintage, right? Uh, or, you know, primitive, you name it. Dirty and grungy. And um, we'll make it look like it's straight from um, the farmhouse from 100 years ago. <laughs> With few exceptions, right? Um, all right, so I just have a short strand of lights here, you guys. I love using the teeny lights. I have one strand of teeny lights left, and they have a short in them. So I did not want to use those today because I don't want to run the risk of it shorting out and, and you know, causing any kind of problem with my fabric here. So um, I've got to return those and exchange them for a new set. So I'm just using a small strand of white Christmas lights. I would suggest a strand of like 10, which is sometimes hard to find. Occasionally you can find them at Hobby Lobby, okay? Um, my Hobby Lobby will have them occasionally there. The strand of like 10 lights is the perfect size, and I think this one has 20. So uh, I will not keep this strand in there long term. I will get a shorter strand. Uh, this is left over from Christmas. So I'm wrapping it around my hand so that I kind of have a little tube here. Here's the next thing that we're going to use. You guys have seen me use these little window um, candles. Now this one, let me see if I'm going to, I'm going to have to plug this in. Um, we got crazy dog around here. <laughs> He's chasing and playing and wanting to really be rowdy. So, sorry if you hear some loudness. That's what's going on around here. Um, if it's not kids, it's it's our fur kids. <laughs> or both <laughs> at the same time. All right, so let me unplug my glue, hot glue, because I don't need that. We're swapping out lights around here. Okay. Now this is a candle lamp um, that I've used in, you know, in projects before. Excuse me, I have like, I must have burlap fibers on my nose. <laughs> um, I kind of grub these up. Uh, now I will say that this one is one of these automatic, these light censored ones. And so if it sees light, it's not going to come on, which is going to be a problem. But I'm going to show you how to work around, <laughs> how I worked around that temporarily today until I get me some more um, of the ones that stay on all, all the time. This one is a light sensitive one. So like it has a little sensor right here. So if it's dark, see I put my hand over the sensor so it thinks it's dark, so it will come on. But I'm going to put this down in here with these lights, and if that happens, this light's not going to come on. So I'm, I'm showing you how to improvise today um, because I didn't have one of the regular lights that stay on. So what I'm doing, I took a tube, and I was going to paint this tube. And that's why I said I forgot my paint a second ago. I was going to paint this tube uh, like a black or like a dark brown. But I've put some wax drips on there to make it look like... a a tapered candle, right? This is actually the roll, the cardboard roll from aluminum foil, you guys. And so I'm just going to slide that right over my candle. <laughs> I cut it down to size and it's not really going to show a whole lot. You'll see how we kind of dress this up in a little bit. But what it is going to do, it's going to keep uh, my light sensor on this candle covered and so the light will stay on. <laughs> Hey, Vicki from Minnesota. Hello, Betty from Maine. Thank you all for hopping on today. Love having you here. 
And then I'm going to take this strand of lights and basically wrap it around there. I guess you could wrap them around there too if you really wanted to. Um, I just kind of wrapped it around my hand and so I kind of already had a, a little circle of lights that I'm just placed down over that too. Now, if you want to put some hot glue down into the base of your jar, this would be the time to do it. You know, fill it up with some hot glue and then you can put the base, just the metal base, don't put your cord in the, in the hot glue, just the metal base of your candle down into that hot glue and that will give you some added stability to, to what you have going on in here and so this will stay put. Now I have enough, I kind of think burlap and things going around in there that I think it's going to be secure enough. It was anyway earlier when I kind of put it together. Um, so I'm just going to kind of gently tuck this down into the jar. Now. The cool thing about this is that, you know, we looked at the, the loose weave of this burlap a little bit ago. So the light shining through this burlap is going to give us that really cool look of that we have like a grain sack going on here. Okay, so let me tuck this down and give it a peek here and I'll show you. So, okay. Now, I need a few lights in the front, it appears. I don't have, there we go. If you don't have light shining through just the right places, you know, you can go in there and kind of wiggle them around a little bit. But let me show you how cool this is. So, my lights look even brighter on the camera. I don't know why it does that. Um, it doesn't look that obnoxiously annoying, <laughs> really bright. <laughs> but you can see the look of the grain sack through there and that's where the teeny lights would come in handy. The teeny lights are a much smaller little bulb and they give you a much gentler glow than these these larger uh, bulbs but you get the look that that's a grain sack although it's it's a jar. <laughs> now if if you put an LED strand of lights in here it's not going to get hot uh, so look for a small strand of LED lights, okay? Um, that's what I would do. If you want to use battery operated, you totally can. I, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with battery operated lights, you guys, because I don't like changing out batteries all the time. <laughs> I just don't. But you do what works best for you. And if that works best for you, you do what you want to do, okay? Now, I'm going to take both strands and hang them out the back. There's all kinds of lighting options available, you guys. Just find what works for you. You can definitely use the fairy lights. They would definitely work perfect for this as well. Great question. Okay, now, you can see that I had to put that little, that little tube and that keeps our sensor, our light sensor, covered so that this candle thinks that it's supposed to be on all the time. <laughs> so that was what I had to do as a little, little hack this morning. Okay, next step. I was thinking for a second, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> I have some fabric strips. You know, I love using fabric strips that I have coffee grunged, coffee stained, um, and I use these in my project. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take just some grungy looking fabric strips. You can use any kind of fabric strips that match your decor, guys. Yes, this is where you put your own style to it, your own color theme. Um, you could use any kind of fabric strips you have, okay? I'm tying this in a knot over to the side. We're not finished, we still got several steps to go, so hold tight. <laughs> and then we got a little mini haul of some things I wanted to show you guys. Um, I'm gonna tie that one off to the side and we'll trim it up here in just a minute. But I also wanna take a strip of this black gingham um, homespun material and I'm gonna tie it over here as well. I kind of want to tie it off t to the side so that it dangles on the side and it won't cover up our little label that we put on there. And I'm double wrapping it. So I'm wrapping it and then twisting it around the back and then coming up the front. Now this is where you could put a little hang tag on here if you want. Um, you could put a couple of sprigs of uh, dried Sweet Annie, which is I think what I'm going to do here in a little bit. I totally forgot my scissors. I'm not going to be able to trim that off. Oh well, that's okay. So then this lampshade, let's grab some of this Sweet Annie. I've got it right over here to the side. Um, I love this. Who's grabbed some Sweet Annie? Have y'all been getting some of this? 
or planning to grow it this year. Um, I mean, it's, I've heard that it's super easy to grow. I had a super sweet follower. She has sent me some sweet Annie seeds. And so I'm going to try to plant some of my own this year. Um, all I'm going to do is take a few of these little sprigs. I probably should have put them in here before I tied my knot. That would have been the smart thing to do. Okay, well, we can we can tie another knot. So let's get that knot ready, leave it loose, and then tuck some of this Sweet Annie in that before we tighten it down. That's what I like to do. Um, let's just put a few sprigs on there. And a little goes a long way, so you can keep this as simple as you want, but that just gives it a nice primitive touch. Okay, there we go. Now, the lampshade, you guys. So let me hold this up. Let's put this, well, let me give you a close up without the shade first. I need to kind of grunge up the, um, the little tie and the burlap, but I think that's super sweet. My little tie got up a little too high. I want to be able to see the burlap. Now, what I did on the back is I t tucked those cords on the back. I'm missing a question. Is that the same as baby's breath? No, it's not. Um, it's similar. It's much smaller in, in, as than baby breath, baby's breath. I'll spit that out in a second. Sorry. Uh, you can't grow it in pots or in the ground, either one. I've heard that it's really, really easy to grow. Now, I have never tried it, but we're going to. I'm going to this year. And I probably will try it in, in a pot, honestly. Now, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to trim those off later so that they're not dangling off quite as much. Now, it's a little hard to see. Um, let me unplug so you guys can see the little label that's on there. Isn't that cute? So, you could have just lighting at the top and totally leave the, the lighting at the bottom off, um, depending on what you want, you know, what you want to do. But this is the lampshade of this so love <laughs> and I've done a lamp for almost every season and so it fits right over that little bulb now sometimes you kind of have to play with it to get it just the right angle okay I can't tell if that's crooked or not but is that not sweet that's this is going to be my everyday jar lamp I've made a I've made uh, a valentine's which is what I've cleaning out and, and put away so now I need one that'll last me through the summer uh, we've made a fall and we've made a Christmas version uh, but this will be my everyday little light, light. sorry we got reconnection notice um, this is a really soft dim light so it's not going to be very bright this would be perfect to leave on as a night light okay and um, you know it's not going to be super super bright all right, so let's put this together really quick as a little vignette. Let me show you what I've got in mind. So over the weekend, <laughs> this was one of the things I was going to show you all in my haul. Look at this little uh, hen. This came from the Target, the dollar spot. Now this was $5, but I love the look to it. I just think that's so cute. Probably what I'll do is add some coffee grunge to it um, just to give it a little bit of, of different variation in color. But I'm thinking that that basket weave is going to soak up that coffee grunge super well. And it's going to have an amazing smell. And it's going to kind of help it blend in with my other decor. So, and if it doesn't want to soak in real well, you can take a, a light, um, a real light grit sandpaper and kind of rough it up just a little bit. And so it'll soak up that mixture even better. Sometimes they put a little bit of a sheen on it, and I think it prevents it from from absorbing moisture. So, um, there you go. You can see how quick and easy that was, and it just soaked it right up. It, it took a second, but there you go. Grunged it up, and now that's going to have an amazing smell, and it's just a little bit darker, warmer color, and then this side. See? It's totally pr your preference, right? So I'm going to use this. Uh, Stop bring paper towels to the table. Yes, I did. I m made a couple of drips on the table, and I don't want to get that on my shirt. So a couple weeks ago, we made this adorable little egg basket, you guys. 
little egg basket. Let me turn this around for you. We made this. You'll never believe it. If you didn't watch it, you will never believe it. We made this out of a Velveeta cheese box. Okay. Look at the bottom. That looks like old farm, old barn wood, really is what it looks like. The good, neat, crackly finish. You would never know that's a Velveeta box. Here's even the back side. It even has some more crackle, uh, an amazing color that comes through there. But we've dressed that up, made it look like a little farmhouse egg basket, right? Or egg box, however you want to say. So what I'm going to do, this is going to go into my little cozy corner, I think in my kitchen, I think is what I'm going to put this. So let me grab a few of these things out of the way. See how well these two items are going to coordinate well together? I think those are going to be so cute. Let me kind of tilt down my camera just a little bit more. Hey, Miss Kelly from Rowena May Inspired. How are you, sweet friend? Um, so we've tucked the, I think I'm going to tuck these together, okay? Perfect little color combination going on there. Now here's the other thing I thought about doing. I have one of these um, egg baskets, okay? Let me kind of dump out what I've got in here. Let's let's start fresh. <laughs> let's start fresh. I love this little wire egg basket. You'll see these at Hobby Lobby occasionally, and I like to grab them. But this one's pretty small. So what I'm thinking I might do, depending on where this ends up going, I'm thinking I may actually sit this jar lamp down in this egg basket. I don't know. Or maybe, no, I, I have little hooks there, so I can't... Could I sit it upright? That would be cute. Now I'd have to do a little bit of, of reworking there, but um, that that would be cute. Oh, that would be really cute. You know what I could do here? Put that right there. Stuff some little eggs right on there. Yes, that would be cute. Now, I would have to work on something to make sure that this sits up without wobbling because it has little hooks on the side of my my little egg basket. But then I could prop this jar right up on top of that. I have this little faux grain sack here that would look really cute. And then of course we have our little hen um, that we could tuck right in over there too. Let me kind of adjust this a little bit. I think this is gonna be a cute little vignette, you guys. Cute little vignette together. Um, might have to play with it a little bit so I can see it from the front side, but I think that's going to be so cute. Now here's another thought which you could do. Get a candlestick, just a basic black candlestick. What I could do, um, I could put this lamp on top of this candlestick. I have done that before. My camera is really close. <laughs> Whoa, sorry guys. Um, and it's not wanting to go back up. Oh gracious, I'm telling you. Their struggle is real. Okay, it's just gonna it's gonna fall on me. So I have done this before with another lamp, um, it, but it didn't have the lamp shade on it. Let me grab the cords. I don't want to knock everything over. Sometimes if I need a little extra height, what I'll do is put one of these jar lamps on this little pedestal, this little candlestick, and it gives me a little bit of extra height. Um, and so that kind of creates a little, a little, a pretty little vignette. Now I could set this little chicken right up there on top of that basket. How cute is that? That would be really cute. I like the side with the coffee grunge on it. That little egg basket there. So we've got a whole little egg, um, farmhouse egg scene going on right here. Now I think for me, I think that's a little tall with the shade, but if you have a shorter jar or a shorter candlestick, that would be perfect. You could put your little chicken right there. Okay, that's a thought too. Put your feed sack on there or over on the side. All kinds of little options. But this came from Target. All right, real quick. Once I get that staged up, I'll take a photo and show you guys. But I wanted to show you real quick some of the other things I found while I was shopping at Target this whole weekend. I don't hardly ever go in there, but I thought these are some really cool things that I bet you'll like too. Um, hey, Miss Mary. Oh, you just got your special delivery on Telegram. If you wanted that little um, 
That label design just was delivered to my telegram list. Doo -doo. That little label right there. Okay. Um, and it's still on there. If you're not on the telegram channel, head over there in a little bit and it'll still be there for you. But these are wooden eggs. Three dollars for a set of six of these wooden eggs. I thought those are perfect to use um, all year round. Okay. I mean, you could paint them or you could grunge them, stain them, or leave them natural as is. I got two of those and those are three dollars a piece. Super cost efficient, I think, for, I use those all year round. Look how cute those are. I'm not a gold type gal, so I can see me um, giving these a little bit of a primitive look. I love those. Just love the shape. Now that's five dollars for a set. These are little ducks. And I, I haven't actually taken them out, but they don't feel very heavy. So I thought those were sweet. And let's grab a few more things. We've got just a couple more minutes, four more minutes before our next creator comes on over in the craft on the spot group, you guys. Um, okay. I thought these were really cute too. Um, little uh, cutting boards, little circle cutting boards. Two of them come in a pack and the pack is $5. So these are really cute. Um, this would be really cute just sitting with your with your rooster on top of it <laughs> or your chicken hen I'm sorry not rooster and your hen um, you know something simple just adding some different layers and, and levels of, of items I love doing that now I thought this was really cool I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet but look at that that's an egg shaped cloche yes five bucks five bucks and it has a wooden base and this is glass but I love that so I'm coming up with some ideas on that. If you've got any good ideas with that, let me know. Um, you know what I don't see is my other little bag. Oh, they were so cute. They were little mini cake stands, but they were plastic, um, but they were just like a mini size. And they even had um, a cake plate. They were basically a mini cake plate. They were adorable. I got two of them. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I thought they would look so cute staged around um, in my kitchen. So I can't wait to um, to use those. Now, I also have some happy mail from our friend Roxanne in Pennsylvania. She, I, I, may, I may need scissors for this. I'm going to see if I can't um, can't make it happen. She told me she was sending me some things. If now, if I remember right, she told me that her um, or she and her husband maybe are renovating a house. I think is what she told me, and they are, are have some really cool things. Now she sent me these. I can't wait. Let me let me see if they feel pretty good size. This has been sitting in my post office box, and I haven't. Had. I just went to check them this weekend. <laughs> um, so hang on. You bought, oh, did you, Glenda? You bought the clothes too. Trying to figure out how to do an Easter thing for, oh, that would be really cute. Yes, that would be really cute to create a little Easter um, gift out of that. Yes. Okay. Now let's see. She's packaged this up super good. I don't think I'm going to be able to get into it without scissors or not. Oh. Come on, take. <laughs> We've got one minute, one minute. Let's see. Oh, I might have to send y'all a picture over. <laughs> might have to send y'all a picture later of what's in here. Oh my gracious. Ah, here we go. I can't wait to see what these are. Okay. I kind of know what I think they are, but she told me that she may be sending, so. I just haven't seen any, haven't seen them to know exactly what they are. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my go Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on. Look at that. That is a vintage door lock, door handle, door assembly. Is that not beautiful? I mean, you could use the door plates. You could use the knobs. Oh, my goodness, Miss Roxanna. You're awesome. I cannot wait. I've seen some beautiful ideas over on Princess using these. How cool. Can you just imagine the story 
The stories that this could tell, I mean, if, if they could only talk, right? So neat. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I can't wait to, to do something with this um, with you guys here on a live very soon. I'll be back another day this week. I believe it is Wednesday. I can't remember the, for sure the date and the time, but I will let you know over on my Telegram notification channel, you guys. You will have a wonderful day. Our next creator is coming up live right now over in the Craft on the Clock group. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, I'll see you soon.